look at Psalm 42, 3. Before we read, want to have a prayer. Lord, just thank you today again for your word. I pray uh, that your presence continue to permeate this place. That you forgive me of my sin, cleanse me from my righteousness. Stand in and speak through me. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. of Lord, my strength, I will be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalm 42 and 3. Tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Oh, Talk about simply, Where is your God? Where? Where is your God? In our text, we find David faced with the time of struggle that many are going through today. David's case, he has been exiled from his kingdom, and he feels he has nowhere to turn. He desires to feel the presence of God within him, but God seems to be nowhere around. Those who are around him were asking questions, where is God? Were really insinuating that God had left him and had no longer paid any attention to his prayers. Yeah. We too desire to feel the presence of God. Amen. There are those that have suggested that God has left us. And perhaps sometimes in our lives from some of the circumstances that we've had to face, yes, sir. we may ask ourselves the same question. Okay. Where is God? Amen. David is faced with such a dilemma. He remembers the days when he went with the multitude through the house of God. Mm -hmm. He recalls the voices of praise and joy during the worship experience. But now, his haters say, where is that God now, David? Where is God when you need him? Oh, what a question. For the child of God is perhaps a question of one who is seeking him, or one who may be sincere. But for the unbeliever, it is perhaps a question of one who is being sarcastic. When properly considered, it's an important question. But it's also a dangerous question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to find yourself in a position where you give the appearance that you're trying to talk about. Men have pondered to themselves, their great minds have considered, where is God? There are those who need to go back to the beginning of biblical history so that they might gain a more reasonable understanding of just who God really is. Okay. The first declaration of the Bible is the declaration of the eternal being of God. Yes. The first revelation of the Bible is the divine revelation of the eternal existence of God. The first person mentioned in the Bible is God. Mm -hmm. The first name that appears in the Bible is Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. The first voice that was ever heard, the voice that broke the silence of the universe, was the voice of God. The first acts recorded in the Bible are the creative acts of God. Yeah. The first and only pronouncement of God's creative acts as good and very good were made by God. Yeah. 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 The first man on earth was created and fashioned in the image and likeness of God. Man's first knowledge was the knowledge of God. Man's first knowledge concerning himself and who he is and what he is was told to him by God. Man's first words were taught to him by God. 
Man's first conversation was hell with God. Yes, sir. Man's first privilege was granted to him by God. Yes, Man's first glimpse <laughs> was a glimpse of God. Right, yes, Man's first consciousness and his first step was with God. Yes, his first stroll was in yes. the Garden of Eden. Yes. And, and then God officiated the first marriage in the Bible. Yeah. That just so happened to take place right. between a man and a woman. Right. 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 And let me say that as it was then, it still is now. Right. It is divine intention that marriage continue to be between a man and a woman. Right. Man has no right to alter divine uh, right. intent. Right. Right. Man is not qualified to a rule in a courtroom that marriage can now take place between two men and two women who say they love each other. The first chapter of Romans calls it abomination. Yeah. And Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of it. <coughs> the participants in these ceremonies, the courts, who have made this gross error and, and support what they call marriage equality, seem to be saying where is your God? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They have defied him in the name of some kind of sick, sensual, and polluted love. Well, no wonder David says, my tears have been my feet, day and night. Yeah. He was so overwhelmed in sorrow. He was unable to eat. Mm -hmm. So his tears had to serve as nourishment for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not much of his sorrow was the result of the abuses that have been hurled at him from his enemies. But when we look at the attack on the family by the courts, uh, it's enough to take your appetite away yeah. and cause tears of sorrow to flow yeah. because they act like there is no God. All, right. All that man has accomplished has been accomplished according to the permissive will of God. Yeah. All right. It is in God that man lives and moves and has his being. Yes, sir. Yet with all that God is to man and all that God does for man, man's conscience is so sealed. His mind is so dark until he has the nerve to belch forth the question, where is God? Although there is daily evidence of God's being and power in the earth and in the sky and in the sea, Man still has the nerve to ask the question. Where is he? Where is God? We live in a day of distrust. We live in a day where people refuse to trust in the eternal existence of God. We're at a time when the very foundation of all that's worthwhile is being shaken to the core by reprobate-minded decision makers. We live in a day when some men believe that something has happened to God. In this age of scientific know-how, some mistakenly believe that they have outgrown God. They believe that God of our fathers has simply gone out of business. They would rather serve the God of materialism because the God we talk about and pray to and sing to and worship in their minds has excused himself from all the and if he were ever around, where is he? Okay. They feel he has politely excused himself for a while. They don't believe in him and the one that we worship and serve. He, he appears in their minds to be absent. Mm -hmm. Our political system has gotten considerably more corrupt. Yes. Our schools are filled with children who respect yes. no one. Yes. Our homes are invisible. And our churches appear to have lost the sense of the true presence of God, and we have traded worship for entertainment. Yeah. All right. No wonder the question is asked, where is God? Yes. For the person who is seeking God, uh -huh. they ask the question out of demand because of their sincerity. Mm -hmm. For the person who is being sarcastic, they ask the question out of denial, the result of their unbelief yeah. in his eternal existence. The name of God does not command the respect that it did back in the day. Mm -hmm. The name of God used to mean something yes. as we grew up. Yeah. Uh, never before in the history of the world have there been so many bewildered, perplexed,
perplexed and mixed up and despairing people. Yeah. Everywhere you look, someone is all broken up mm -hmm. uh, about different life issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everywhere you look, someone is committing suicide or murder. Yeah. 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 Never before have there been so many young people who have lost faith yeah. in everybody yeah. and in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Never before has there been so much merciless and heartless murder in our streets. And now, even in our churches, South Carolina, where a young man goes into a Bible class and guns down the pastor and the class. Yeah. But the reason for so much unrest, the reason for so much killing, for so much turmoil and despondency and distrust is because we've done some God switching. We've switched God for gold. We've switched wholesome instruction for trash. We've switched prayers for parties. We've switched our church memberships to nightclub memberships. We've done some switching. And at the same time, people who arrogantly ask, where is God? Are the same people who are coming loose at the scenes. They think that God is out of date, that he's old-fashioned and old-school. Uh -huh. and no longer needed. Well, they teach our children that they're brainwashed. Mm -hmm. They ask rhetorical questions like, where is God hiding? Mm -hmm. Why does he keep himself in seclusion? Mm -hmm. Why can't we see him? But Jesus said no man has seen God in his time. People who think they want to see him in his absolute holiness don't understand what they think they want to see. Why? Remember Moses in Exodus 33, one of my favorite passages, where he asked God, he says, show me your glory. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, now Moses, nobody can look at you. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Do for you, Moses, you my servant. I I'm going to put you in a cleft of a rock. And I'm going to cover the cleft with my hand. Then I'm going to make my goodness to pass by. And then when my goodness passed by, I look my hand. And you can see my hinder parts. But you can't see my face in here. So he, he, he proceeds to, to put Moses in this cleft. And he covers the cleft with his hand. And shh, his presence goes by. And he lifts his presence. Moses gets a peek at his hinder part. And then when you go to the 34th chapter, as he comes off the mountain, his face shone. Yes, sir. It shone so bright because it was evidence of being in the presence of God. And the presence of God will change your countenance, your character, your Christianity, your commitment, your change. So how do men think they can look upon the holy countenance of God? His countenance is brighter than 10,000 suns. Right. He's not a God that can be seen with the natural eye. It has to be an, an eye, a spiritual eye. Yes. We accept the fact of orderliness in the universe and the constancy of its operation without question. Uh, when night's over, day is coming. Yeah. When day moves off the scene, night is coming. Yeah. They take turns and have been taking turns ever since he set it in motion. Yeah. So why do we want to question the uh, existence and eternality yeah. of God? Well, it's absurd to say there is no God simply because you can't see him. You, you, you can't see sound, but you listen. You can't see air, but you don't refuse to breathe. You can't see electricity, but you flip the switch. As long as you paid your RP in air. You don't see your own strength, but you keep moving. Yeah. Uh, you can't see sight in your eye, but you keep looking, even though you don't see yeah. what makes you see. Yeah. Uh, you can't see taste in your tongue, but you keep on eating. Yeah. The atheist said that there is no God, yeah. but the Bible has already labeled him a fool. Yeah. Secularism says that we, the God we talk about may have been all right in his day, uh, but his day is out. Yeah. A new day is here. Science is on the scene. Yeah. There are those that believe the answer to the problem of the mind is at the feet of the psychiatrist. Yeah. They say, don't worry about going to God. 
You can't see him anyway. Well, go to the psychiatrist. Uh, but I noticed with all the skill and training that the average psychiatrist has in their field, people are still frustrated and going to pieces. And sometimes the psychiatrists themselves <laughs> are going to be committing suicide and, 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 and uh, sent to insane asylum. Yeah. However, the seeming contradiction is that there are times when it seems that the wicked have some convincing facts on their side. Oh, oh, yeah. The godless seem to have the most money. The godless seem to never have to work. They seem to have the most friends. They seem to have the best houses. They seem to hold the highest offices yeah. and have the money to pay to get in the offices. Yeah. They run roughshod over the weak. They take advantage of the poor. Yeah. Their children never seem to want. Their conscience never seem to bother them. Yeah. Their lives seem to be a life of ease. Their hangouts are dens of thieves. Well. It seems that trouble never knocks at their door. They destroy our youth with no remorse of conscience. They do a booming business as they operate the night spots. And yet, on the other hand, many of the godly live in poverty. Life tumbles in on the godly without tickets. Life has a way of just showing up unannounced with bad news. Job said, when I was at ease, trouble came. Sleep breaks from us in the midnight hour. Unkind words are hurled at us for no reason. Yeah. The little good we try to do is evil spoken of. Many godly people are left in the world all alone. Many Christians have not known a well day in many years. They sit alone in a nursing home with no one to visit them. Some Christians have to stand with their heads bowed amid the wreckage of their shattered dreams and broken hearts. For some, tears are their meat day and night. Some are hated without provocation. Some crisis after crisis uh, come in their lives. And then, then comes the laughing. And then comes the mocking. Where is your God? You, you've served him all these years? Where is he? Crazy. The wicked rejoice when the righteous meet up with life's reversals. Mm -hmm. And this gives credibility to their argument. But biblical history shows us great servants of God who are in deep despair in moments of distress. Great men had to face the dreadful silence of being abandoned by God mm -hmm. or feeling abandoned by God. Mm -hmm. And somebody said that when God is silent, he's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Moses wandered in a maze around a mountain on the backside of the Midian Desert. Mm -hmm. Noah preached and no converts came because they didn't see any rain. Mm -hmm. Elijah was faced with a dried up brook and a murderous Jezebel yeah. in pursuit of his life. Yeah. Jeremiah was found weeping in a cold dungeon. Yeah. Joseph was put in Potiphar's prison behind false accusations with an iron collar around his neck and chains around his ankles. Yeah. Jonah found himself in the belly of a fish for three days because of his refusal to come out of his cultural comfort zone. Yeah. John was in prison and as they sharpened the axe with which to sever his head from his body. He sent a committee to Jesus and said, are you the Christ? Or should we look for another? Jesus on the cross even said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Sometimes it seems that God does not hear our cry. No wonder the fanny cries, he says, pass me not, oh, gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me. When we see starvation and poverty, right. social injustice, mm -hmm. yeah. financial unrest, yes. terrorism, and sickness, yes. the fool says there is no God. Yes. Right. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before there was a here or a there. Yes, sir. Before there was a who or a what. Yes. Before there was an up or a down. Yes, sir. Before there was an in or an out. Yes. God is. Before there was an after or before. Before there was a thought or a thinker. Before there was a book or an author. God is. God is above us. Joshua 2 11 says, For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above. God is around us. Psalm 125 2 says, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, 
So the Lord is round about his people from henceforth and forever. Yeah. God is before us. Yes. Isaiah 45, 2 says, I will go before thee and make crooked the crooked path straight. God is behind us. Isaiah 30, 21 says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in me. Yeah. God is beneath us. Yeah. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Yeah. God is with us. Yeah. Psalm 46, 11 says, The God of hosts is with us. Yeah. And God is in us. Yes, John 14, 20 yes. Yes. says, At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, yeah. and he in me. And I am you. Yeah. Yeah. Mine of a story I think I told a few years ago about an old preacher who went to the doctor. The doctor said, there was no God. He asked the preacher, can you see God? The preacher said, no. no. The doctor said, can you touch God? The preacher said, no. He said, can you hear God? He said, no. Can you smell God? He said, no. The doctor said, I told you there's no God. <laughs> The doctor had to walk out of the room and the preacher started praying about what he was saying when he came back. Mm -hmm. So when the doctor came in, the preacher said, hey doc. He said, yeah. He said, can you see pain? The doctor said, no. He said, can you touch pain? The doctor said, no, man, you crazy. He said, can you hear pain, doc? He said, no. He said, can, can, look, can you smell pain? He said, no. Then the priest said, well, then pain ain't real. <laughs> Why you charge my insurance? And give me a co-pay. And have me set an appointment if pain ain't real. And I said, now hold on, Reverend. Hold on now. He, he said, well, the priest said, well, how do you know? The doctor said, because I know pain is real, but sometimes, every once in a while, I can feel it. Yes, the preacher, said, the preacher said, I was waiting on that, Doc. Because even though I'm not able to see God, even though I'm not able to touch God, even though I'm not able to hear God, even though I'm not able to smell God, sometimes I can feel it. Said he's 
a friend that stay closer than a brother. Uh -huh. Sometimes uh, I have to cry every once in a while, but he won't leave me alone. Sometimes I want to give up, but he won't leave me alone. He promised, yeah, he promised. When the devil thought he had me, Jesus came and grabbed me, and he held me close, so I wouldn't let go. Long 